This video is how I looked for CRNA schools last year when I was applying and a couple just walking you through step by step some of the free tools that exist out there and then stay till the end because that's what I'm going to talk about what I specifically looked for when I was choosing between different programs. What's up? My name is Anna. I am an ICU travel nurse part-time and full-time student registered nurse anesthetist. I am in my first year of school so I'm still working part-time and I will be full-time in classes come January 1st of 2023. As always, timestamps are gonna be down below and please comment what you would like for me to talk about next time and please subscribe to support me through CRN at school. All right, we're gonna dive into it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to coacrna.org or maybe .com and this is the Council of Accreditation for CRNA Schools. This is where you're going to find the tool that allows you to compare different programs and it's gonna give you a lot of information about the programs that you're gonna pull up. COA CRNA is also where you're going to be able to find the Council of Accreditation's accreditation guidelines for different programs, which is really helpful as an applicant and as a student and then as a uh, resident, nurse anesthesia resident, as you are looking at different programs and comparing all of the different programs and outcomes that you will eventually be hitting while you're in CRNA school. For this video, we're going to talk about uh, just comparing two random schools, neither of which I applied to, both of which are great programs, but we're just gonna do like a side-by-side -side analysis of what it's gonna look like when you are choosing between two different very good programs. Before we dive into using the tool itself, I wanted to go over a few key considerations that might be really important as you are choosing between CRNA schools. The first is, this matters for some people, for me it didn't really matter that much, choosing an integrated versus a front-loaded program. I wanted to go to a program that was front-loaded, front-loaded meaning that I do all of my didactic work first before I go into an operating room. I just wanted to feel that I was prepared and that I had at least a conceptual grasp on the clinical cases that I was going to be seeing. Many programs are front-loaded, many are integrated. Integrated meaning that you start clinical early on in the program from sometimes your third semester onwards. There's pros and cons to both sides. Both are prepare really great CRNAs. Both have very comparable boards pass rates. It's really, that's just a matter of preference. For me, I did want to do my didactic first before going into the OR. For others, that might not be a deal breaker. If I only got into one program and it was an integrated program, I would absolutely have gone to that program. It's not a make or break it type of thing, but for me, I did want to just feel that I had been exposed to all of the kind of clinical concepts before I was going in and being hands-on in the clinical environment, learning and with my patients. I really think that I'm going to hopefully be able to apply a lot of the knowledge that we learn in didactic and then take that into the OR with me as we start. Either way, both are great programs. That's just something to know as you are choosing between programs. Some are integrated and some are front-loaded. The second thing before diving into the school comparison is that it is important to consider the cost of attendance and the cost of clinical. So at some programs, you will pay out of pocket to travel to places to your clinical sites meaning you're gonna have to pay for your hotel, for your lodging, for transportation to and from the clinical site. Some schools do have, you know, cheap lodging that is arranged for their nurse anesthesia residents, their NARs, while they are in their clinical residency portion of their program. Again, at the end of the day, being a CRNA is worth it. You're doing an investment in yourself while you're in CRNA school, but it is worth it for you to just be aware that some programs cover the cost of housing and some don't. Um, personally, I'm going to a program that does not, but the clinical sites is worth it for me, and I have a van <laughs> that I will likely be living in during a portion of my CRNA school journey, which is a video for another time. Okay, now we're diving in directly to the COA CRNA school comparison tool. I'll have this pulled up in a window above me, coacrna.com. And for this video, I pulled up Rush, and I pulled up University of Southern California, USC. I have no affiliation with either program, I, other than just having friends who have gone to both programs, but no affiliation with either university. They're both great, they're both great programs. These are just two programs. I picked one because it's kind of on the more East Coast side. I, I know Rush is not East Coast, but it's closer to the East Coast, and then I picked one West Coast program just to kind of compare the two different a little aesthetics or what have you. Okay, 
So we have COACRNA.com up. You're gonna go to the school comparison tool, which I'll have again up here so you can see. And then we're gonna go through a couple of the stats and a couple of the things that the COACRNA tool will show you. So first for USC, you can see that they require a minimum GPA of 3.0. Of course, a 3.0 is likely not the most, it's not the most competitive GPA applying to CRNA school. They require two years of experience. Most schools do now. They require your PALS, your ACLS, and your CCRN, and three letters of recommendation. Okay, this is all pretty standard, but this is something that's really helpful for applicants to see. You can see that last year they had 85 apply and they accepted 24. This would be a good school to apply to, especially if you know that you don't have the most competitive application package as a whole, you should definitely be applying to more than one school. So 24 out of 85 is about 28% acceptance rate. That is high. I would not say that that is normal or representative of like every single program. So you want to just give yourself the best chance, right? So you want to apply to some schools where they have a really low acceptance rate and you want to apply to some where they have slightly higher. Just, you know, if your dream is to be a CRNA, shoot your shot, lots of different places. So yeah, they have a pretty good acceptance rate. And then we'll scroll down to see the next slide where you can see about their cases and you can see about their clinical sites. This is something as you're applying to CRNA school, you really should be aware of because they're gonna ask you, hey, like, why do you wanna to go to this program? And then you can say that you looked into it a little bit and you really like that they have 14 different clinical sites and you like how well prepared all of their students are. Okay, so you can see here that the number of cases on average that their graduating uh, CRNAs had was 698, and they had on average 2,654 hours in the operating room. Okay, so this is where you also should be familiar with the COA CRNA Council of Accreditation, the minimum requirements to finish CRNA school. The minimum number of cases to graduate CRNA school is 600. And this program got you almost 700 cases, so it's well above the minimum. And then the hours requirement, it's not an hours requirement, it's a cases requirement, but they have many hours in the operating room. One thing to note in CRNA school is that oftentimes you're, the only hours that are counted are, as Chrissy told me, it's seat in anesthesia chair or in the operating room. So your time working your patients up for clinical the night before, the time pre-oping the patient, none of that, counts for your hours. So you actually have a lot more work than is listed here. Other key things here to see is that there's a 0% attrition. That means that they've lost none of their students, which is huge. And that 100% of the people who uh, sat for boards passed on their first try. So that is huge, right? All right, now let's compare that to Rush. Okay, so for Rush, a minimum GPA of 3.0. Again, that would be the minimum two years of experience, ACLS, BLS, and PALS, that's standard. And then as an applicant, I would want to know that last year 200 applied and 24 were accepted. So that's a 12% acceptance rate. I would want to know that as an applicant going in because you know, all of those 200 people who applied are also ICU nurses who meet the requirements. So that would be something just to prepare yourself mentally with, uh, just to know exactly kind of what you're walking into. And then we scroll down to the next slide where you can see that they had on average 1,035 cases and 3,340 but in anesthesia chair hours or feet in OR <laughs> hours, 14 clinical sites. Okay, so then you see that at Rush, they have well above the minimum number required number of cases. So 600 cases are required. If we remember looking at the Council of Accreditation guidelines and Rush had 1,035 cases on average for their graduating um, students. So that means that these people are spending a lot of time in the operating room and that they're getting a really good clinical education. Both programs are good clinical educations. This is just something for you to know as an applicant as you were looking into different programs. Also of note, it looks like their attrition was also very low and their first time pass rate was very high. So both of these are great programs. Then let me talk a little bit about why I picked the program that I picked. So the things that I considered to be most important for my education was I wanted to have an exposure to a variety of anesthesia delivery models, meaning that I wanted to work in both a care anesthesia care team environment and I wanted exposure to independent practice sites. Um, and then I also was looking for a place where there was really strong faculty support at the program where I'm currently attending and I love it. Uh, they've had 0% attrition for years. They really are very solid on supporting 
There are nurse anesthesia residents throughout their residency portion. They're really involved. I have a faculty mentor and a nurse, nurse anesthesia resident mentor, and I've just felt very supported throughout the process. And I am really excited as I dive into my didactic <laughs> portion where that's gonna be full-time in January. And another thing that I really liked about this program was that they perform at well above the minimum number of cases. You, we, we receive, I believe it's closer to the 1,000 plus cases versus the 600 cases. And there's also many opportunities for blocks during school. So as I look to the future, I don't know what type of anesthesia I would like to practice yet, but I do know that I would love to have the opportunity to be trained on a lot of these different peripheral nerve blocks. I would love to have the opportunity to be trained just to really take really great care of patients and practice at the top of my scope. And I believe that the program where I am currently attending is a good place to do that. Also, I would love to hear from y'all what you would think is the most important in a CRNA program. And comment below what you would like for me to talk about next time. I also have a, so Chrissy CRNA and I collaborated to start Confident Care Academy. And we have resources for people who are applying to CRNA school, current SRNAs, as well as ICU nurses, new grads. Uh, check that out on confidentcareacademy.com. And also check out my friends, Jason Bolt and Stacy. They also specialize in preparing nurses as they're applying to CRNA school to help them succeed. I hope this is helpful. Please comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.